many years ago, I was a preacher at this local church in Michigan, and one of my responsibilities was to visit somebody who was sick in the hospital. And I didn't really want to go, but it was my job. You know how that is. And even though a lot of people think preachers always have this great heart, I didn't feel so great that day. I was feeling uh, loss and, and grief about something in my life, and uh, but I decided to go anyway. And as I got there, I want to share with you a story about a, 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 a moment in time that really changed my life. I mean, it really encouraged me. Some of you need encouragement today. Some of you are on the verge of giving up because of loss or losses. Some of you have lost the dearest on earth to you. And I, we at Spark of Life have a mission, and our mission is to walk beside those who are grieving. We can't fix you. We don't think you need to be fixed. You need to be loved. You need to be accepted. You need some strategies, some help that will help you live forward with your pain and not give up on life. That's our mission at, at Spark of Life. And we have resources, and you can go to the website, sparkoflife.org and all that. But I want to share with you a story. And I went to this hospital and they had like six floors and I was, I entered the elevator on the first floor and it was in the winter time and I had this uh, coat on, but I had a yellow sweater and my mother had given me that yellow sweater when I was 19 years old. It was June 2nd, 1969 that I turned 19. I'll never forget it. Uh, by the way, if you're a giving person, you can write down June 2nd, Dave Matthews birthday. Okay. If you're a giving person, cash only, you know. So anyway, I got on this elevator and I had taken off my coat because it was pretty warm in there and I had this yellow sweater on and it was an old yellow sweater. I mean, I was in my 40s. So I, this sweater was over 20 years of age. And I get on this elevator and suddenly this older lady comes in the elevator at the last second. The door almost closed on her, one of those things. And uh, I held that you know, button down. Usually I held the wrong button and it closed on people. You know, there's a button with arrows going out. I, I finally figured that out when I was 60 years old, that that's the button that will keep the doors open. And so anyway, she gets in, she had to be 85, right? She was very old. At that time I was 42 years old, something like that. And uh, she was a very striking uh, older lady, uh, I was going to say she hits people with her fist. That's not what I meant by striking. I meant she she was pretty pretty good looking for being 85 or 90 years old. Her hair was was very neat and and she had some really cool looking clothes on. I mean she was dressed very lovely. And uh usually I'm talkative if you know me. I talk all the time, but I I wasn't talkative this day. I wasn't feeling like helping anybody. You ever have one of those days you just don't want to talk to anybody? That was one of those days. And she looked me kind of up and down like, well, if she had been like 80 years younger or 70 years, 60 years younger, maybe, you know, but no, she was 85-ish. And she's looking at me and suddenly she says, I just want you to know, young man, that you look quite handsome in that yellow sweater. And I said, well, thank you very much. That's so kind of you to say that. And, and the door opened on the fifth floor and she got out and I said, have a good day. She said, you have a good day too. She didn't have to tell me that because in a matter of four and a half floors, a 20 second conversation with an old woman had made my day. I was walking a little taller, my shoulders were back. I, I was thinking I was pretty the hot commodity, right? Women came onto me in the elevator at McLaren Hospital in Flint, Michigan in the year 1992, maybe the last time a woman has come onto me. Okay. And she was 85, did I say that? Man, I was feeling on top of the world. I went and made my visit, I came back, I went home. Uh, we picked up the kids from school. We had dinner that night. The kids are like, I don't know. They're like 14, 12, 10, and 8, something like that. And we're at the dinner table, and 
I said, well, I have something to share tonight at the dinner table. Uh, at least three and a half of the four kids rolled their eyes like, what does dad have to tell us today? And so I shared with them how this good-looking woman, failed to mention her age, had come on the elevator and had come on to me. She had actually flirted with me. It was at this time that I saw my wife roll her eyes. I had not told her about the romantic encounter I had on the elevator. And, uh, and my, our oldest, who, who was like 14 at the time, <laughs> he rolled his eyes big time. He said, yeah, like some woman would come on to you, Dad? I said, well, she was really good looking. He said, well, she must have been 80 or 90 years old or had a CNR eye dog with her. Little did he know how accurate he was in his description of this lady. I said, what makes you think that this woman had a seeing eye dog? And that's not fair to the sightless, the people who struggle with their sight. That's, that's not a correct thing to say. And, uh, and to assume that she's old just because she came on to your father really hurts me. He said, well, how old was she? I said, that's not important at the time. And of course, I had to proceed to tell her to tell the family that, yes, she was 85, and yes, the seeing-eyed dog was probably around the corner, and yes, she did come on to me. I was honored that she came on to me. Came on to me. She had encouraged somebody. I don't know how many years longer she had on this earth, I'm assuming not very many. I don't know why she was at the hospital. She might have been visiting a husband who was dying. I don't know. I never saw her again. She never called me to flirt again. But she changed this guy's life for a while. She encouraged me. She lifted me up. She made me feel, maybe I'm not so ugly after all. You ever been there? Thinking, no hope, darkness, I'll never be happy again. I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge you to lift somebody up today. I don't know what you're going through. I know you need lifting up. I think one of the best advice I could give to somebody in the throes of grief, give yourself permission to feel bad. I hate that you're feeling bad, but you need to. I don't know a shortcut to grief recovery. Do you? Give yourself permission to feel bad, but then do something. Find somebody in a yellow sweater and tell them they look pretty good. Encourage somebody today. I'll tell you what I did the next day. Um, the yellow sweater was old. It had, uh, you know, looks of age around the collar. It had threaded. I, Debbie, my wife, had, had asked me for years, why don't you throw out the yellow sweater? I now know why I didn't throw it out. But what I did, I went out the next day and I bought me another yellow sweater without the unraveling of the threads around the collar because I liked how it made me feel. Somebody gave me life that day. I felt more alive than I have in a long time because somebody on an elevator in Flint, Michigan, in the middle of winter, who was 85 years old, said kind words to me that lifted me up. Give hope to somebody today and see what happens to your hope. At Spark of Life, we believe there is always hope. Have a great day. Find that yellow sweater.